All right, everybody. Welcome to Ultra Loop. What an amazing product. What an amazing reactor instrument from those guys over at Twisted Tools. They're on fire. They can't stop making amazing, amazing uh, boundary pushing products. So my name is Matt Saletti. I am a instructor and course designer over at Dubspot. Check us out. And I want to basically kind of explain what's happening here with Ultra Loop. It's a, it's a sophisticated product, and I don't know that there's anything else on the market like it. So let me just run through some sounds real quick so maybe you can get an idea of what it is before I even start telling you. So by the name, you can imagine it's playing back loops, right? But that's only half the battle. It's playing back several loops. And you decide and you control easily how you want each loop to come in, when, and how to be affected. Lots of control. Basically, what this is, is if you've ever seen the product uh, Twisted Tools makes called S-Layer. It was a amazing product that basically would kind of layer your samples in very interesting and random ways, giving you a lot of controls to create these very intense layers of one-shots, loops, whatever you want. So Ultra Loop is in that same idea where we have multiple loops. Basically, you see these sections right here in this main window right here are your different loops. Each row consists of a different loop. And how it's controlled is from the sampler, the playback, and all this good stuff. <laughs> But the main thing you may be seeing here is these little boxes. So what this is, is basically a smart polyphonic gate. You basically tell the loop when to come on and off within a 16 step grid right here. So by just drawing, you can create interesting textures by using different pieces of different loops. <laughs> A single loop or just a bunch? So right off the bat, you can see things might get a little crazy. So first thing I want to point out is that you have a sampler, right? You control which loops you want to play back. And you have all the main characteristics of a sampler you'd want to control your audio. Down here, you also have scenes. So scenes are very helpful if you wanted to create this in a performance aspect and you wanted to be able to make different parts of the song with complex uh, changes all saved within one scene. So we're gonna start like that actually. And in fact, I'm gonna use my MIDI controller. I'm using the machine pads to basically pay through these different scenes right now. Listen to this preset. <laughs> So just by bouncing around the different scenes, you could see things like a filter came on at some point, uh, the loop length stopped to like basically a, a two bar, kind of like a, a buffer type thing. Uh, very easy to control. So let's start from scratch. I'm going to right click and get rid of that for a second here. And let's just select the first loop so we can kind of wrap our heads around what's happening. So this is some big crazy buzzer sound. And again, this is all, for instance, any loop library you want to put in here, you can. This is all content from Loop Masters. So imagine putting in whatever genre, maybe mix up different genres, just throw in whatever samples into the sample map here and go to town. Some of these aren't even the same BPM, but it all gets constrained to whatever main BPM you're playing out. So if I don't like this loop, I can just select my loop sampler and scroll through different loops. Let's start with this nice melodic material. 99, that's 
my Wayne Gretzky loop right here. So immediately I can adjust things like panning, whatever I want, reset these things. I can randomize all this stuff. Very smart randomization. Add filters, whatever I like. In this one, I think I might actually take the decay amount and kind of make it a stuttery type of sound. Excellent. So that is scene one. I can actually duplicate this and I'll put this on scene two and we could make some changes, some transitions. Maybe I want to now make this fully open, but reverse it. Right? Now let's trigger scene one and you can see how you can bounce between the two. So on and so forth. So let's go ahead and duplicate it again. And in scene three, we will take the reverse off and let's start adding extra parts of the loop. So if I click here, you can see the first thing that happens is it takes this action away because we are right now in mono. But it's kind of cool. It gives it this nice stuttery effect. And what's cool about this is you can, instead of just using one sterile drum loop, like you can combine multiple drum loops. So now I've got three different drum loops going on and it gives it a whole different groove, a whole different feel. But I lost my initial melody now. So if we turn on polyphonic, now we can draw in multiple parts. So right away, I've taken one, two, three, four loops and kind of repurposed them into a new style. Really interesting stuff. Now I could randomize this and turn these into completely different loops or do whatever I want. You never know, but I kind of like it how it is now. I'm just going to set it away. So what else can we do with this guy? You have a lot more control other than scenes. You also have what's going on over here. So these interesting squares or slots, you can control things like effects of which there are plentiful things like stutter, filter, reverse, grain stretching, gating, all this kind of stuff. So if we want, we can turn this stuff on and give it a second layer of control on the sequencer. But what I want to point out first is that the way these boxes work. So I can move things around. You have 16 boxes, and when I let go, it goes back to zero, which would be the initial box, I guess. And what's really slick about this is have this be like your safe zone, you know, because things are going to get crazy when you start going around. This will be your safe zone to always come back to a default type of setting, right? So say I want to turn on an effects sequence here. Let's come to the first slot. And what I'm going to do is turn on all my effects now. If I let go, and by the way, I'm pinning this so I can work with it. But if I let go, you can see how this is going to work. I'm going to turn my effects on. And nothing is happening yet because I haven't written an effects sequence right here. All right. So I don't want it in the initial spot. Let's come here. And now let's have it full blown on and see what it sounds like. Lots of effects happening right off the bat. I don't necessarily know what's happening yet, but what happens here is this effects gestures is creating behind the scenes, under the hood in Reactor. It's doing very smart randomization for you. It's always going to sound good, and the best way to do it is just to kind of generate new effects gestures. Very interesting right off the bat, right? So effect sequence two, let's actually only just have it come on at the second half of the sequence. And effect sequence three, let's just kind of do it in the beginning. 
and in the middle. So right off the bat, I've created a, f a safe one, all on, half on, split, all sorts of things. Now from there, I can get even crazier with different effects gestures. So this is just the default one. All these bars will give you different effects as well. Let's listen. <laughs> so things can get really interesting and kind of do its own thing right off the bat. Now what's really fun about this too is that you can actually record these different gestures. So if I go ahead and hit play, it's moving around already. Let's record it however we want. And if I turn it off, it'll go right back to zero. So same with this. You can have it on or off however you like. Now, the same way I was controlling that from my MIDI controller, you can have the MIDI control these slots instead, just by turning on here or here. So, for instance, if I want to turn on the effect sequence now, I can hit C sharp one. Oops, C sharp three. However I like. Set these up at di different octaves, on different pad controllers, whatever you want. Have them all enabled and be able to control different things from each spot. So what is a track sequence then? Well, it's the same idea. Track sequence one, let's go to a different one. And there you go. It's the same idea as drawing in these, these gates. Same way we did it with scenes, except each scene can contain different track sequences as well. If you get where I'm going, there's just a world of messing up these loops in a beautiful way. Uh, to create a lot of randomization and interesting glitchy typed out effects. Randomize. <laughs> if you could see me now, my head's just bobbing up and down. This is the beauty of it. It's like every time it's going to inspire you or, or send you in a different direction. There's no way to make it really sound bad, honestly. Uh, and that's a real important sticking note when you're working with how many different loops and how many different tempos and genres. It's like you could get crazy with this, but you know, nothing allows you to so quickly just kind of pick and take different parts of each thing. Now, granted, we could go into a DAW, throw in all these loops and then copy and paste and edit and truncate and do all this, but I mean, it would be no fun compared to how fast I can just draw things in and experiment, randomize. Uh, it, this is a one and only kind of tool to do this. So we all know, like I said, loops are super popular. Uh, there's so many different kinds of manufacturers, so many different kinds of loops. Uh, this is a great way to breathe new life into all those loop libraries you have. Or, you know what, this is an amazing product that you can throw your own loops in, take different stems from your song and actually kind of chop them up and, you know, work with them from there. Take different parts of the beat together, whatever you like. And then it's an amazing performance tool at that point. So you have your song all split up, different loops. Go out, perform with it, stutter it, make the crowd go crazy. You can't lose with this thing. That's basically what I'd like to say. So go get it, get nuts with it, and breathe some life into those old loops. <laughs>